Hey guys, welcome to Beer with Friends, which is way better than our original working title of Three Idiots Drink Beer in a Garage, uh, which is still happening, by the way. I'm Aaron Gore, certified Cicerone. Owner of Fresh Pitch Beverage Consulting, been around beer pretty much as long as I've been alive. But don't tell my parents, they don't need to know that part. Also with us today, Josh Hayward, host of Beer with Brewpreneur, certified Cicerone beer server, and uh, former home brewer. I like beer. And I'm Steph. <laughs> so Steph also markets beer. She just doesn't know anything about beer. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. 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 That's that's there what we're all go. here for. So the only thing, what we really stand for here at the network is the only thing better than a beer is a beer, beer with, with friends. friends. So that's what we're doing here today. We decided to go ahead and just work our way through the Sierra Nevada portfolio, pretty much all of their year rounders. Uh, try them all, share our thoughts on them, get the perspective of somebody who literally is good at nothing other than beer. Mm. Getting the perspective of someone who brews it a little bit, knows it a little bit, and... And somebody who knows literally nothing about tasting beer. So we're going to see where this goes. This might be our last episode. <laughs> all right. Either way, we're going to have some fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it'd be great. No pressure. We're sampling uh, beers from the hoppiest place on earth. It, it is. I love it. If, if nobody has actually been to Sierra Nevada yes. Mills River, it is like I've been to like 200 breweries across the world. The nicest brewery I've ever been to is Malt Disney World in oh, Mills River. There it's you go. Amazing. I but I figure, live there. It, I, I think we all do. Yeah. <laughs> If the mountains, Asheville, beer, what's not to love? And if this is a zombie apocalypse, I promise you, that is weird. That's where you go. <laughs> Hold up in there. It's it's great. Are we going to drink some beer? Guys? Yeah, I think so. So yeah. let's go ahead and start off with Sierra Nevada Pale. Uh, I think this is the beer that most people are from, most familiar with them on. Uh, it's definitely the number one seller, though that is uh, starting to head the opposite direction. I gave myself a little bit of a gentleman's pour, and by that I mean I was that dude who had the bottle first. Mm-hmm. See how it's going to go. Here. <laughs> That's exactly how it's going to go. It's all right. I'm hoping to be able to drive home, so this uh, is okay. Good luck. I got a guest room. Okay. But uh, yeah, this is my dirty garage. <laughs> yeah. Well, cheers, guys. Cheers. Here's to episode one. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Yeah. All right. So what do we do? Mm. We're supposed to smell it, swirl it. I find I'm drinking more, it tends more, to help. But... I'm more of a wino. Ah, well, if you're a wino, the most important thing is to stick one pinky up okay. and look at other, mm -hmm. everybody got else it. over your nose. Uh, but yeah, if you... One, to drink it <clears throat> properly. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, first thing you're going to do, take a look at it. I mean, okay. you drink with your eyes more than anything. I know this is something Josh does on his channel all the time. It's all pretty. about the experience. It is. It is pretty. So, Josh, what do and you think about it? it smells good. Well, the, the thing is, like, you look at a beer, some people just look at it and say, hey, it's a beer. But you can learn so much about a beer and kind of set yourself up for what you're going to taste just by looking at the color. Here we've got kind of a golden, golden color. I say they've used some pale malt, hence the name, pale ale. Um, they got clever. Yeah, very, yeah, very clever. Really just a nice, nice golden color there. Um, I can just by looking at it, it's not going to be too heavy. Um, looking forward to a good beer. Thank you for tuning in to Beer with Rupert. Was it? Uh... <laughs> I got like, snapped into that, right? <laughs> yeah, that was impressive. The mode just Gosh, switched. So, so, Steph, tell us a little about what you're uh, seeing and just, uh, you know, first glance, kind of your initial impressions. Mike, I have a question. Was it bad that I just spit out gum? Like, is that going to affect me? Cause Maybe I'm... a little bit. <laughs> yes. Anything will affect it, but you still enjoy the beer. But yeah, right? no, this entire thing is ruined. We're going to have to start over. But uh, aside from that, no. I'll more. finish this, Joe. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm noticing is how smooth it is. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> smooth. <laughs> no, uh, it's it's more flavorful than I expected from something called a pale ale. When I see pale ale, I tend to think like it's going to be kind of like, like yeah. not a lot to it. It's more like a light beer. Kind I really of hope that thing. we have a graphic to go with that sound effect. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was great. Yeah, but it's it's a lot more flavorful and it smells amazing. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I can't tell you. It smells like a really delicious beer. Is what I think it smells like. Yeah, I, I, th know. I think you might have nailed that on mm -hmm. the head. It's mm -hmm. great. And honestly, like if you really want to get into like tasting notes, I mean, you got grapefruit, you got hints of pine, mm -hmm. you got just a touch yeah, tell of me what's uh, in here. light toastiness to it. So it's uh, Cascade Hops is really kind of the driving influence on it. It's pretty much the prototypical American hop. Uh, Grows in good in all regions, uh, close to it. Well, yeah, if, it, if there's any American hop that's going to go pretty much anywhere, it is Cascade. But most of it's grown up in the Pacific Northwest, like most American hops. That's but, why my yard failed in trying to grow <laughs> No, no, no. That was just you. But, uh, <laughs> I'm not a farmer. Your black thumbs. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, Cascade's pretty much the prototypical American flavor. It's basically the foundation that most American flavors are built off of. 
uh, which is basically a whole long set of words that are saying that it's, it's good beer, drink it, have, have fun, and do it with people you enjoy it with. There you go. Done. Wow, that was... Yeah, no, I'm, not, I'm doing behind. what you just said, yeah. Well, you yeah. did your gentleman's pour and you've been talking. Wow. I'm, I'm trying to trying to nurse this little, little bit here, you know? I know. Mm. Yeah, this is a great all-around beer, even good with cooking. Um, my wife and I use it in various dishes and whatnot. Just add some good flavor, good robustness, good solid beer all around. I thought yeah. you meant you like to drink while you're cooking. Both. A little bit of column it's a, win. a, a little bit of column It's a win-win. You enjoy it's the beer. time to deglaze the pain. You've in. already drank everything. Uh -huh. And go. the food always tastes better when you're drunk oh. anyway. Oh, and mo most good things point. seem better when you're drunk. It's uh, <laughs> why I start every morning with a PBR. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so I do have a confession. This is actually my favorite beer of all time. I've had this really? beer more than any other beer. Uh, that includes Bud, Miller, Coors, Keystone. Whoa, have, whoa, whoa, are we allowed to say those on here? Oh, he's going to bleep them all out. It's okay, just going to seem like I'm swearing a whole <laughs> lot. <laughs> but uh, true story. So my in-laws, uh, way back in the day, uh, knew I was into craft beer. And they really wanted to. When you came out? You when came I came out, out to visit them? them. Yeah. You oh, came yeah. out and told them you were into craft beer? When I came out as being into craft beer, mm -hmm. they really wanted to impress me and really make an impact. And so they decided to go out and, you know, get some craft beer for me and decided to buy something on the order of eight cases of Sierra Nevada wow. Pale Ale. Wow. I had a lot of Sierra Nevada He grew to love that one. I grew to love that one. It's a, it's a good thing it, it is a good other beer. Way. Otherwise, this could have gone way worse if yeah. they picked up, like, I don't know, Steel Reserve. There'd still be seven and a half cases left of Steel Reserve all these years <laughs> I later. I don't even but know what that one yeah, is. Yeah, to this day, favorite beer of all time. That's excellent. It is a good one. I really enjoyed that. More than I expected. Very, very good. All right. I'm glad you came in with What's such low next? expectations. What's next? I'll pour. You'll pour? Oh, man. I need really a job. Volunteering. Well, in that job. case, let's go ahead and uh, dive into another classic. A, a, more of a modern classic, but Torpedo IPA. All right. My oh. friends. Thank I don't you need so that much. Pour, otherwise, we're never making it to episode two. Thank you. Good thing I have an urgent care center at the end of the street. There Can we you pour go. one out for our, <laughs> for our homies? Yeah, we can, but this is my garage floor, and I don't feel like cleaning it up. So. <laughs> That's a completely different smell. Yeah, completely different mm -hmm. smell. This one actually uses whole different hops as well. So one of the things a lot of people don't realize is Sierra Nevada was actually instrumental in creating uh, citra hops, which are what is used in Torpedo alongside a few others. Citra is... I've heard of that. Heard yeah, of if Mosaic is the Beyonce of hops, then Citra is basically the Halle Berry. <laughs> yeah, still sexy, just uh, you know, a little <laughs> older and a little, a little more out of fashion. But, uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that was a good one. Cheers. Okay. Well oh, we didn't done. choose on this one. Well no, done. we didn't. We're well, man, we're already screwing up. This is going to be a you're, long you're, session. A long okay. session and probably the last episode. <laughs> now, I, First and last. I like IPAs. I, I mean, just as a general statement. I'm a I'm an IPA girl, yeah. so I would have thought I would have liked this a little more. It's a little not that I don't like it, yeah. but it doesn't taste nearly as flavorful as that pale ale did to me. Mm. It's definitely a little more just outright hop forward. Sharp. So, yeah. yeah, it's definitely it's not a sharp smooth. and good description. It's not it's a smooth. smooth. <laughs> Less smooth. Oh, that's gonna be our first meme. <laughs> Went viral was smooth. Yes. That was it. First and last episode. Uh, yeah, so Torpedo, they introduced this one and I think it was the mid 2000s. It was really the first IPA that they had ever done as a core product other than Celebration, which we don't have on here just because you got to get that super fresh comes out in the fall. Uh, but yeah, this was really kind of a formative uh, beer when it came to just kind of how to use Citra. And these days it's become one of the most common hops in the hazy IPAs, which we're getting you hazy little thing that really kind of come oh, to dominate the IPA I do market. Love it. Kind of the next big thing. Let me ask you a question. <clears throat> What's it mean that it's extra IPA? Like, so extra. Exactly. I don't know. if you, you, Everybody's got that one friend, usually me, and they're like, oh my God, he's so extra. Like, that's basically what that is. It's a way of saying that it pumps up the bitterness a little more than what you'd normally expect out of their products. And, mm, okay. uh, and for that, they use a uh, hop torpedo, actually invented it. Uh, basically, what that is a Hence small. Torpedo. Torpedo. There you go. They're all clever. They're like, oh man, it's kind of like a hot bullet, which they also invented, but it's for something that is liquid. Therefore, ipso facto and it's such as torpedo. torpedo. How about it? Nailed it. So essentially, <laughs> that's a little container they put a bunch of hops in, force the beer through it. Uh, really, what that does is just extract even more hop character out of it. A little more heavier of a beer, too. 
higher alcohol content. Yeah, it doesn't compared say, to it doesn't say on here, huh? It doesn't say what the numbers are. Mm. Does it? The federal government would oh. probably like them to. <laughs> <laughs> We're not even a full beer in. <laughs> wow, it's going to be a long, yes. long Season. episode. That's and great. we got Bigfoot coming up. Look oh, out. Man. The okay. barley wine. So from now on, the 7.2. Mm -hmm. This is 7.2. So for comparison, yeah, the, the pale one? ale is 5.6. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah, so. A little more malty in this, too. Is yeah. that what it is? Is yeah, that what little, it is? A little more caramel malt. So yeah. that, that was kind of. Typical of IPAs for a long yeah, time. Deeper, kind of deeper a, golden than the last. I do one. taste it farther back in my mouth. Yep. I think. Yep. Is that a thing? Uh, well, that's probably going to be coming from the hops. That's just that bitterness. So I'll kind of linger in the back there okay. and stick around with you. Uh, a lot of the hazier IPAs, they don't have that bitterness aspect. So once they're off your palate, aside from a general feeling that you have drank orange juice, they're mm -hmm. they're kind of gone. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, some of the more traditional West Coast, they'll stick around a little longer. Good stuff. Yeah. All right, down the hatch, fellas. Down the hatch. We got a lineup to go here. All right. Which one's next, guys? Next up, I'd say it's probably going to be a hazy little right, thing if we're sticking with the pails and the IPAs. Do the hazy little thing. Hazy yeah, little baby. thing. All right, just being that we just talked about the per percent ABV. Now, this one, I don't see it on there. All right, pour them and then I'll do it. I'll yeah. look well, for it because I'm pretty good at finding it. There we that. go. <laughs> Sierra Nevada, that's our first Thank note you. for you. I know you're kind of a big deal, but um, make it easier to find your ABV. It's probably. Uh, I bet you someone in the comments is just gonna put like a little circle like drawn around so and be like, guys, it's like right there. It is. Yeah. There it is. Like, it's so easy to find. It may be written sideways on the on the yeah. can. So definitely more haze. It's hazy. Six seven. Six, that is seven. one hazy little thing. So right in the middle of Cheers, the other two. Cheers. That smells Cheap like a fruit basket. California. Does smell like a fruit basket. So hazy IPA is obviously kind of the big thing right now. The thing Huge that nobody thing. will. Stop talking about for five minutes. Uh, Steph, you said you like hazy IPAs. I do. Well, there we go. Guys, you heard it here first. Steph likes mm -hmm. hazy IPAs. <laughs> so hazy IPAs, big difference, obviously. They're a little softer on the edges. Mm -hmm. They don't have that big punch of bitterness. Tend to have a huge hop aroma. Uh, a lot more dry hopping, usually mm -hmm. a lot more actual hops used in them. This is actually the highest selling hazy IPA in the entire country, which wow. a lot of people are super into Fun hazies. Fact aren't so much familiar with uh, with that because when they think hey, Sierra Nevada, they're thinking kind of, you know, your dad's craft beer. There you go. A little more old school. Uh, but when they released that, it really just kind of took off to the point now it's actually, I think, just past Torpedo to become their number two seller. It, it, as far as hazy IPAs go, it's pretty solid. Oh, I mean, it's, it's well balanced. One of the great things about these types of beers, they're very approachable for your non-IPA fan. It's like my wife, who really doesn't like IPAs, I was like, hey, try this hazy IPA. It's a little bit more approachable as far as the bitterness goes. They, yeah. They like the fruitiness to it um, and a little smoother as well. <laughs> Do you hate beer but love orange juice? <laughs> Try hazy IPA. So Aaron, right. what you're saying is you're not a big hazy IPA fan. Believe it or not, I have absolutely no problem with it, oh, but okay. it's a lot more fun to get people going. It is. I, I, I do like a non-hazy as well, and I know there's all the West Coast. I really hope in the course of this series that I learn to understand what like West Coast and all the other different you're in the right place oh we can have fun with this. yes That's because half people the fun say, is like i go to a bar and i say <laughs> I, they're like what kind of i said what ips do you have and they'll say like well we've got the new england ipa we've got the west coast and whatever and i go oh okay i'll have this one like, <laughs> i'm like hmm, i'm not sure what i'm in the mood for could i taste them both you know like i don't i just pretend but um i'm just waiting for something super specific like uh yes can i get a southwest kansas city ipa <laughs> i was gonna say mid floridian but i like yeah. mid floridian <laughs> a mid floridian ipa it's just a hurricane uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, some seawater it's all bitterness and a little salt and yeah. nothing else uh, wow. but Ooh, i like so, so something like this if i was gonna sit outside especially like hotter weather which it is not right now in this garage <laughs> it's a little cool it's just brisk. a little bit it's brisk yeah these Josh tough guys a vest. these yeah. tough guys are wearing short sleeves. hey it's yeah. not a it's not a pad he's, he's a wearing vest, a vest though. i'm tough he's wearing a vest <laughs> but like if i was gonna sit outside and just drink a beer like i like something like this it's, mm -hmm. it's more light and refreshing if i'm gonna eat it with food i feel like there's so much flavor with the juiciness yep. that it kind of overpowers or changes what contrast. i'm eating yeah, so they, i would like something like one of the ones we just had more so with food if that makes I keep. I get a I'm lot sorry. Of was she supposed this. to be the one who doesn't know anything about beer? I Watch drink out. beer. I just Josh, don't... you've been demoted. I, I, Matter of exactly. fact, I think she's getting promoted over me. There I we need, go. We need to so. switch chairs now. Yeah, exactly. Can I right. That frame over there. Yeah. <laughs> so these things, yeah. I mean, they they're 
any beer is going to have numerous foods that are good to pair it with. Uh, Hazy sure. IPAs are one of those that's so new that some of those standard pairings that have been around forever haven't really set in. Uh, honestly, one of the things I love with them, which people turn their nose up at, and I do the same thing with kettle sours, Fruit Loops. Mm. It's a stupid pairing, but it's delicious. Wow. And pretty much anything where citrus would make a good compliment is also pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Something like a, a like a white fish. I mean, something you could do like an orange blaze on and would really just So you pour this right. over your Fruit Loops? Not in the Fruit Loops! Because <laughs> <laughs> that is the breakfast of That's what you do right with Frosted there. Flakes, yeah. you animal. <laughs> <laughs> No, you drink it with the Fruit Loops. I actually eat my Fruit Loops dry because that's what kind of weirdo I am. I eat nice. all my breakfast cereal dry. Mm -mm. I need help. That's a, good, well, that's a good breakfast date with your daughter. She eats the Fruit Loops. You have the hazy IPA. I feel like this is really kind of cracked open my weekend. Yeah. So, well, cheers to that, bud. <laughs> Down the hatch, fellas. Yeah. All right. It's funny because our producer's actually sitting behind the camera right now, and every time we take a drink, he takes a drink. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my God, Ernie, <laughs> you're involved. We get it. We are. We, we maybe should have like um, the drinking game where every time somebody calls it something smooth, we do a shot. We'd be dead. Yep. Yeah, that's probably true. I don't have enough wouldn't make it out of the garage house for that. No, that's, all right. You'd all be saying. <laughs> What's next? We got Bigfoot. Yeah. This is pretty much a drinking game. Oh, we already game. drank that one. The it's porter. one where we all win and we all porter. lose. Keller Vice. Let's go, go with, with the this, Keller Vice. This Do light guy out. right here. Yeah. All right. Oop. Josh, have you even taken porter. a turn of pouring? He did. Yeah, he just did. poured the hazy. Yeah. That's it. I'm drunk. Allow me. Oh, thank you. Allow me. You know, I was trying to take like, the bottle from him. I know. That was what in the world? <laughs> Very rude. And I claim to be a southern gentleman. I know. You know, they say like in Italy, it's rude to pour your own. You're... Supposed to, I should have oh. bought you for mine. Oh, yeah, it's like. Well, that's why Italy doesn't rule the world. Huge yeah. offense. I mean, cheers. Did once. America. That's right. Oh, my. So, this is their killer vice. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know. It's a killer vice. A killer vice, yes. This is killer. their killer vice. The cheat is vice. The new show There's on wheat. True TV. It's killer be a, vice. A wheat beer. That's, yeah. Again, why are you getting some of the haze there? <laughs> This is a this is a hazy vice. A hazy vice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. So this is kind of what hazy beer was before hazy IPAs took off. There which is go. one of the reasons I find it funny when people get so mad about hazy IPAs. Beer is supposed to be clear, and it's like it's our history nope. right there. Yeah, it's liquid bread. It's hearty. It's light, refreshing. Just a touch of yeastiness to it. This one's not too over the top, though. Uh, this one's actually pretty well reserved, uh, which so is it feels a little fizzy on my tongue. Is that a thing? Yeah, I think that'd be the carbonation. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I like Coca Cola must maybe be like it's an allergic revelation. reaction. I don't know. <laughs> so, so are you allergic to wheat? Because this is going to get real bad if, the, if you are. So, it's the uh, celiac Mr. beer tasting. Advanced Cicerone. Tell me about this. Oh, open... no, 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 not an advanced Cicerone, just a certified Cicerone. There you go. Just a regular I, Cicerone. I, somewhere... Hopefully, in a year, we'll be able to there read this that's up. Yeah, we're going to have to bleep that out. Ray's going to be. So, oh yeah, no, yeah. We'll yeah. get a, we'll get a phone call from the other advanced sisters in yes. town. They're gonna be like, "Oh, you misrepresented." There you go. So tell me about this this open air Bavarian fermentation that they do with this. Yeah, so a lot of it's just using actual open air I'll ferment over here. here. So talk about that. anybody who's ever been in like a uh, <laughs> means they don't have a top on them. So anyways, <laughs> oh. uh, topless fermentation. That's how we're referring to it now. Nothing but topless fermentation. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sierra Nevada. I promise our jokes get better from here. <laughs> it's not, yeah, so this it's not one, likely. super light. I feel like this is just a, a perfect beer for, you know, summertime, yes. sitting out. Oh, yeah. It's definitely got a little more body to it. It's definitely got something going on. It's not going to be, you know, like drinking water, but light. Uh, Come but on the, now, be nice. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> You're not supposed to mention it. Slightly better than water because you have alcohol in Bud Light? <laughs> Again, we're just bleeping it all out. The everyday man would call this a yard beer. Like summertime. Lawn cutting, more beer. There you go. You're shower out, beer. Out cutting your grass. Shower like I need beer. something refreshing. And Daughter's beer. taking a nap beer. Any time beer. Yeah. Hey, what do, uh, what, what do Bud Light and, a can, and Sex in a Canoe have in common? Oh, gosh. We can't say this on camera. They're both effing close to water. There we go. Nice edit. <laughs> <laughs> well done. I like See, it. I know things that, about beer. That's a good yeah, there one. There we go. That's yeah, a good yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, so definitely a step up on any of those macro lagers. Uh, definitely has a lot more flavor. Uh, just a touch of kind of a banana note to it. Not a yeah. ton of clove. I know banana? that turns some people off. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. For it. Okay. 
That's pretty typical. You'll, of ta you'll taste it now as well. that he said it. Mm -hmm. Well, it'd be really funny if there was none of that and I was just putting stuff in her head and she's like, I can. No, I think I can't. I mean, as soon as you said yeah. it, I can kind of taste it in and my once memory. you know what to look for, and for a lot of people, the big thing, I mean, there's been studies that have shown that you can taste all the same things that someone who's like a Cicerone or a sommelier can. The difference is you don't necessarily know how to describe isolate and describe it. it. Yeah. yeah. Putting words so to that's it. that's the big difference. I so, think that's true. I, I don't think entirely, I think there is a training Sure. Of your of your mind. They call it alcoholism. <laughs> <laughs> Working on it. To your point, though, it it takes time to learn how to describe. Like it. with anything. Yeah. With, yeah. with anything, even uh, like music. Like if you just you can hear a wall of sound. It sounds good. Or if you play. Well, an tell instrument. me what sounds. Good. Yeah. Like if you play the drums, though, you hear every single. Like you know exactly what drum heads are playing. Oh yeah. yeah you know how so to pick out. You the can pull the things, pieces. but that takes like a certain level of focus. So I I get that. But and, and a lot of times, like when you said pine and stuff, I was like. But the banana? <laughs> okay, I was homework, like, yes. Homework lesson. Go yeah. home, pull the, pull some pine needles off a tree, and just chew on them a little bit. No, and and you'll be like, that tastes exactly just like the like pale. Yeah. Exactly. Spot it's, on. It's pretty. It's pretty Spot close. On. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, people don't actually realize, but every single bottle of Sierra Nevada Pale is brewed with an entire pine tree. Are you just? I <laughs> 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 the look of seriousness on his face. He, he almost sold you. Oh, that was well, great. He told me it was bananas in this one. Oh, no. No, the banana flavor comes entirely from which the yeast. Which is bananas. Yeast. Uh, but yeah, it's there. And it comes entirely from the yeast, which is just one of the cool things about beer is the fact that yeast makes it. Yeast makes it. You can get so many cool flavors in spite of having just four ingredients. Unless you're it drinking is. a pastry stout, in which case if they put whole Krispy Kreme donuts in there, it'll probably taste which like... Which is a thing. Like butthole. <laughs> No. And Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> no, come on. I had to edit that on the fly. Leave me be. <laughs> <laughs> well, cheers, guys. Bottoms up. I'm, I'm, I'm out. This was kind of a struggle for me. It's been a long time since I've had that beer. It's really good. It I, is pretty good. It, I, I don't see it often. Is this, a, is this a seasonal type thing as well? Usually you'll find that one. It, it, uh, it's... You don't see it floating around that often in individual six packs. You'll see it in the variety packs a yeah. lot. They do sell the individual six packs. But with Sierra Nevada, most of where you're finding Sierra Nevada is going to be on grocery store shelves. A lot of the bottle shops, more craft beer specific places, they just can't compete with the grocery stores. Yeah. Huh. So they don't pick them up in spite of almost universally everybody loving and having respect for the yeah. brand. So you don't see color bias pop I up. I got to admit, I'm a little surprised at how much Aaron MJ likes Sierra Nevada. It I seems like it would be, them. I know, but it seems like it would be too mainstream for you. It wow. is oh too mainstream. Whoa. Yeah. Listen, listen, I'm a jerk, not a hipster. <laughs> <laughs> Have you so, seen your glasses in Beanie and Beer? I'm a jerk and a hipster. <laughs> but see, Love here, it. Let, here's the thing about Sierra Nevada, though, is yeah, they're doing it and they're doing it right. Yes. You have some of the larger craft breweries who I, I won't name names, uh, but you know, they're not necessarily making world-class beer. They might even be making perfectly oh. fine beer, but the thing about Sierra Nevada is they've done almost every style of under the sun mm -hmm. and nailed almost every one of them. And the next bad beer I've had from them will be the first. Yeah. They, they really just kind of do no wrong. And even when they're okay, they certainly don't suck. Yeah. To his point about the variety packs, if you're new to craft beer, or haven't had a lot of different varieties, they always have some type of variety pack in stores depending on the season. And you can get a good variety of a staple and then like two or three different ones for the season which is phenomenal i think that's part of why we wanted to feature a brewery like sierra nevada as whale as whale you got whale. 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 Hey, <laughs> well, <I'll be. laughs> uh why we wanted to feature a brewery like sierra nevada as well is just the fact that they're a brewery that for a lot of beer nerds a lot of people are super into craft beer they kind of fly under the radar mm -hmm. so being able to kind of go through review some old favorites and really kind of reintroduce people mm -hmm. to some of them as well as some people who may not have really tried anything other than maybe pale and torpedo get them a little outside that comfort zone sure. and trying a little more of what they have to offer smart, plus smart marketing so move. good yes smart marketing so next Good call. Up, I was gonna say let's do that one next. So this is the Ocher Vase. This I is don't their. No, I've never even heard of this one. You've never even heard of Ocher Vase. Right, this okay. is this is cactus in a glass. Yes. So this uh, is cactus and lime. Sounds painful. <laughs> <laughs> was this like a beer garita? Sounds painful. Yeah, that's not a bad description. No, that's actually a pretty Can good description. Can I look at the can? What so think? this is their Goza. Goza is a style from the ghosts. The ghosts. No, it is pronounced Goza, and yes, it is 
spelled G-O-S-E, and no, that does not make any sense. Take it up with Germany, not me. Mm -hmm. So Goza is a style that's from good. Germany. It's a wheat beer that's uh, brewed with sea salt and coriander, typically. U.S. Wow. examples, you almost always see fruit in them, but they really kind of went from a style that was virtually extinct, even in Germany. Oh, yeah. To American breweries have really kind of run with them. They've become one of the most popular. There's so much you can though. do with them. The, Some, they're super versatile. That touch of salinity just makes whatever fruit you put in there. Just somebody pop. Google Translate Ultra Vez. What does that mean in German? Hey Siri. It, it means nothing in German. I'm pretty sure it's Spanish. Spanish. Oh, oh, <laughs> ultra. <laughs> what does Ultra Vez mean in German, Siri? <laughs> oh, ultra is other, I think. There's many things I don't oh, know. Oh. Oh, well, really what we've learned is up? Steph is also not an expert in <laughs> Spanish or I German. I don't know. I don't really know. Uh -uh. Okay. Yeah, so this is going to be a sour beer. Uh, sour beers are oh, one of those things. Sour? Super divisive for people. Again, I'm nervous blah, blah, blah. about it. I'm not a fan. About it. Ultra well, Vase, again, or once more. Once so more. So basically, have another. There you go. That's how I love it. you. I love it. That's Third grade so Spanish good. is how they're marketing yes. to you guys. You thought you <laughs> forgot it, but you didn't. That's where they get you. You Anybody said you never Ultra need to remember Vez? it, but now you do. It's so good. I love it. Okay, so, so you're not a fan of sour. I'm a little scared of sour. I don't generally like sour things. Okay. I don't like that. You know when you swell up down here? This is going to be fun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've been nervous for our episode where we do sours because I know it's coming and it's already here. Oh, yeah, no, no, it's, it's already happening. Here. It's happening. This okay, isn't so this nervous. isn't approachable. This is a relatively sour approachable. But I'm excited sour. about the lime and agave. That smell it. Like if you like a I'm margarita, going to, it's going to be very familiar for you. That's really what they're going for. Uh, I don't see the number on here. Do you see? Why do they hide it? They do hide it on some of those cans. Jeez. I smell this and I smell lime jello. Ooh. Like, I can't unsmell that now. You're 100% right. It smells sitting, like lime jello. Sitting in the cafeteria uh, as a 4. kid. 4.9. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Crushable. Yeah. Crushable. It's a full side like, beer. Yeah. You can have this. This is the kind of thing you throw in your little Yeti thermos, you take to the pool. I can't afford Yeti. You can have this for lunch at what's work. The, what's the, the Walmart nine. brand? Ozark Trail. Your Ozark Trail thermos. I feel like go. we just found a class distinction between <laughs> me and Josh. <laughs> <laughs> He's Ozark Trail. I'm Yeti. Mm. No, I'm transported back to elementary school it cafeteria. Is jello. It is Yeah, I can't, I'm, like, well, am you're, I in you're the saying hospital? elementary, I'm saying, like, the hospital. Am yeah, I in exactly. the hospital right now? Yeah. <laughs> the hospital cafeteria. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't really want to be there, and you're kind of stuck there, and like, hey, they've got jello. You know jello. when you're we visiting grandma, but she's having a hard time eating, so you get all of her, like, lime jello? Oh, That's what you're this right. tastes like. You're right. Yeah. Spot on. But she... Also likes margaritas because grandma has a bit of a problem and a little bit of that's salt there. What this tastes like, yeah. So, this was this basically is blowing my mind right category. now, you guys. It's crazy that but that's not a bad, beer, right? This doesn't even taste like a beer, to me. See, and that's still, the reaction the a lot of, of people it. have. And the thing is, this tastes exactly as much like a beer as any of the rest of them. But so many people have this image in their head of what a beer tastes like. Taste Here like. is a very important question. Why do no Mexican restaurants carry this? Actually, a lot of them do right they're now. Start, yeah, yeah they're really starting, starting to catch on. Good. Somebody fun call fact, Mexico the his, and his, tell them so fun fact, <laughs> that this would be great with a burrito. Hispanic people drink more beer per capita than any other demographic in the U.S. What and now it? we're back from that technical difficulty oh. screen yes. that I know we just found ourselves <laughs> on. <laughs> I love it. Some people... Oh. So Ultra Vez, it was really their entry into the Goza category when that was taking off in the way that Hazy Hit it out of the park. a little while longer. Super drinkable, perfect for beside the pool, mm -hmm. great for the old folks' home, tastes just like lime jello. Yes. It doesn't. No. It tastes just like lime jello. It smells like lime jello. It tastes like a beer garita. With a light, you don't put alcohol with in a your light, lime jello? light saltiness. Lime jello. Did you shot. guys, you know, you make. Did you guys ever make that mar that beer garita where you do the limeade can? Oh you yeah, do like yeah. a can of limeade, a can of tequila, a can of beer. Wow. Yeah. Any kids who are watching this are really getting some bad lessons, but it's delicious. It I'm is not delicious. Lie. It's delicious. What do you mean we're drinking beer? What is that like? Why is that so bad? We're, we are teaching a poor lesson. But that's uh, we're terrible. Is, hey, models. listen, you're under twenty one. Oh, you too. Matter of fact, rewind it and then turn it on. You shouldn't have even gotten this far. Here you go. This is, uh, no, this this reminds me of I feel like we're making a difference in people's lives. They're delicious. They are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, it's here about it. Knocks it out of the park. It does. Actually, I, pretty much I, I feel like you guys have really opened me up to this. 
Yeah, a whole new happy to. And there's a, world a to ton me. of great sours out there. There really honestly are. This is like your your entryway, your doorway to the world okay. of sours. Like next week, we're gonna have you on, and you're gonna be like, yes, yeah, so I was sipping on Campion earlier, you know. So. <laughs> I would love to. You're, you're gonna get that joke me. later. Trust, <laughs> trust me. In like two years, you're gonna find that oh, hilarious. Oh, hilarious. All right, moving on to this porter beer. Sierra Nevada Porter, bottle conditioned, as it says on the label. And I committed. You can a, porter I committed right a here. huge faux pas with. Uh, you did I, pour like half of it. I poured there. half of it in my glass, and I poured mine first. He's so not used to sharing. That's so wrong. I, I apologize, guys. That's good. That's I really do. Apologize. So you pour the other half in her. What? <laughs> I'm the only one who doesn't have to drive tonight. By the way. <laughs> Well, could you? Cheers, guys. My apologies, guys. Could you call up to your wife and tell her we could use some snacks? Goodness gracious. Ah, yes. Uh, I'm sure that would go over wonderfully. <laughs> hey, baby, can you bring me and my friend some delicious Tostino's pizza rolls? Snacks. We're, we're hungry. Mm. My, I tasted this too quickly. Hurts. I forgot. I got I got too excited about the pizza rolls. And I, I love a good porter beer. Right just in. the roastiness and mm. just reminds me of cold winter night. Huddling around with a nice porter or stout. And not too harsh either. I yes. Mean, the, the porter versus the stout. I mean, it's smoother. It's a little what? easier drinking. Smooth. Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. It, it's more of like an everyday beer than if you got something like a big stout. It's definitely going to be a little more aggressive, a little more almost mm -hmm. like espresso like. You yeah. Have like a good porter. Oh, that's the wrong one. There's a reason this style of beer got to start with people who are just working really Third time's physically a charm. demanding jobs. <laughs> we got there. <laughs> Do you want us to leave you for a minute with the bottle? No, please <laughs> go on. So yeah, this this is fantastic. I haven't had this beer, and it's it's got to be like ten years since I've had this beer last. And it's and incredible. It's, it's so, so good. It's very balanced. You get the nice roastiness, a little bit of hoppy bitterness in there, but nothing too over the top. This is only five point six. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the biggest things people shocking mistake about beer is they associate, and this is strictly an American mm -hmm. phenomenon. <clears throat> we think that the darker Dirty, beer is higher the alcohol. Exactly. Yep. Darker, I kind of, higher alcohol. I kind of wait to think that. Yeah. yeah, most people do, and there's absolutely no correlation. You could have something like a dark mild that'll be as low as like two to two and a half percent, all the way up through some barley wines that you know, yeah, they're dark, but they're more of like a deep amber than like a pitch black you associate. No, we're, with like we're not stout. talking about wine. Uh, oh yes, sorry. we're about to. It's uh, coming. Barley grape juice. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So, all right, so yeah. tell me about why all of these dark beers taste like coffee. Yeah, so that actually malt. is coming from the malt. Yeah, Josh is 100% right. So certain types of malt will have some of those uh, light coffee notes, mm -hmm. uh, even a touch of that kind of espresso-like acidity yeah. and bitterness. Uh, usually the darker you get, some of those more pronounced, acrid, kind of acidic, bitter notes that you associate mm -hmm. with like just a shot of espresso will come out. Mm -hmm. Something like this, a little lighter in color, because as dark as that is, is actually still brown, not necessarily black. You're right, it is brown. Yeah. yeah. So you get some of those smoother coffee notes, maybe a hint of chocolate, uh, maybe even a touch, not so much on this one. Some of the traditional English varieties, you'll even get a little bit of like a, a raisin or a plum kind mm. of, or a prune rather kind of quality to them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but this one, just a nice that. touch of the chocolate, touch of coffee, little bit of roast, pretty smooth. Nice, <laughs> nice and hearty, a hearty beer. Yeah. And even the history of it, and you know better than I do on it, with the history of the porter beer comes from the, the, uh, the I mean, workers, obviously. the porters. You know, the hard day's work, <laughs> they want something filling and something to, to sustain them after a long day's work, and they wanted a solid beer. That's it. I want the kind of job where literally I'm at the end of my day and I'm like, you know what I need? Beer. Yes. I need beer so bad they're going to name a beer after what I do for a Your there whole you day is beer. Yeah. Why do you need one at the end of your day, too? I mean. Well, I need a beer to wash down the beer. I spent my whole day surrounded by a beer. You know what that makes me want? Air. A beer. This you spent all day earning it. This exactly. smells a little caramelly. Yeah, you'll get a touch Car of that as well. Caramely? Slight sweetness. Caramelly? It depends. Caramely? I'm from the Midwest. It's definitely caramelly, and the rest of you are wrong. But, uh, yeah, caramel. Caramelly, yeah, this sounds wrong. Our producer's shaking his head. He vehemently I disagrees. Did. I, just, I just cut out the L-Y and just say notes of caramel. There you go. Caramel. But you said caramel. Some people said caramel. Ah, there you go. Oh, and the fight continues. Who has yes. the time? It's a whole extra syllable. <laughs> That's where we're drawing the line. I like it. I like There's it. one more syllable in caramel. Ladies and gentlemen, Makes you heard sense. it here first. Yeah. Steph has caramel. settled the argument. Mm -hmm. I like that. Let's stick with that. Caramely. Mm -hmm. Caramely. Light notes of caramel. And it almost tastes a, like, I get a little burnt coffee. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. It's coming from that roasted malt. Yep. 
I, I'll wait. We, we Am I going to be Cicerone so far in this episode? Somebody who knows less she's about a, her. She's on the track. I promise. The way she pitched herself on the show to us, she was like, you know, I don't know anything about beer. And then she's like, touch a rose. So, so think about the last time you burn a piece of toast. And if you tasted that burnt toast, you get a little bit of that in there too. Like very, very heavily. I just throw it away. You should. What? <laughs> Well, when I was a kid, for years Josh has been sitting here slugging through burnt <laughs> toast because he wouldn't just call. I mean, I'm not. So, pizza bread. I'm not rich, but I'm not. We've already established you know what I'm that like, he uses the off-brand thermos, <laughs> and he's gonna go ahead and eat that burnt toast right there. This is not a it's, Patagonia. I go. I go this back. This is not uh, a Patagonia. Hey, it, it's Woolrich. No, you go. <laughs> you go back to childhood. I bet this beard is even off-brand. Mm. Guaranteed it's, value beard. Yeah. It's weird. That's the how, one thing I've got on it. That's the one thing I've got. <laughs> Mine used to be down to here, guys. It's. I all, promise, it was huge. It surprises me how much the flavor of beer brings you back to childhood. That's what I was gonna say because <laughs> your most your you most drink vivid a memories. Lot of beers in childhood. No, but your most oh. vivid memories are from childhood. It's like, hey, I'm trying to make myself breakfast. I throw a piece of bread in the toaster. I burn it. I don't want to throw it away and get in trouble. I was so mad that five years old I had a beer. (laughs) And that's what I remember. (laughs) Wow. All right. Well, that That, escalated quickly. Yes, it did. (laughs) It is crazy. There's something to that, though, how you're transported back to childhood with memories of flavors, sensory memories we were talking about. Smells do take you back. Yeah. And songs. If this beer was a song, I don't know where it would take me. We should do beer and song pairings. (laughs) Then everybody can be mad because they can't taste them and we can't license the music. (laughs) So to speak. An really hour long, <laughs> go nowhere quickly. Oh, Faster silence. We could with, have we could have Ernest beer. play them on like a synthesizer, like so we wouldn't have to license it. The Ernest, same. how are you on a synthesizer? Not good. No, <laughs> still half the license. That's a no go. So we'll do it. Nothing but original music, and then people will have even less interest. It is I amazing. Like, like I really well. can't believe that you guys are watching this right now. Yeah. Like I oh, guess for, in I mean, fairness, we have no idea if anyone will watch this right oh, now. Good well, point. But if but no, so thanks for like, tuning in to Beer With Me Network. If yeah. you're it's like if the tree fell on the florist. Florist <laughs> <laughs> And we've come to that point. We right. haven't even gotten to the biggest beer here. I know. Watch which out. is coming up no, next. Listen, so but, bottoms up. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'll make that point later. Just remember. Put a pin in that. I think you're next on the floor. No, she's not. N- neither one of you allowed to be next. You filled it up all the you're, way. But you're right. I, you know, that's And she's dropping film. trees and florists. Florists. So can't trust her. <laughs> that tasted the best when I took like a big gulp of it instead of a little sip. See, that's where the problem that. started. Yeah. That's where the florist began. Now, who's. Look at this oh. little So, moving on Porsche. to Bigfoot. So, this is called a barley wine. Tell it us is, about that name. I, I know nothing barley about this. Barley wine or Bigfoot? Yes. Just barley wine. So, there. There are a lot of origin stories for the name barley wine, uh, but honestly, it really kind of arose from another style called an old ale. After a certain point, they started basically just designating the the top level alcohol content old mm-hmm. ales in England as barley wines, uh, largely because as England was having a variety of conflicts with France, wine imports were starting to get cut off. They were no more wine. We're going to exactly. do our own thing. Exactly. No, no, with beer. We got wine. It's barley wine. There you which go. Seems like the most like 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 weak attempt to try and rebrand something imaginable. I don't know, man. These are pretty incredible. They are. They're pretty incredible. I think everybody, at least who's into craft beer, has seen those barley wine as life memes. Uh, there are some people who absolutely I've swear never, by this. I've never. <laughs> don't. <laughs> For one, it's about ten years over here. I've never seen that. What's this? the percentage on this one? That's where the fun comes in. I'm a little concerned about. You this. should image on here of this guy bending over in front of a donkey. Oh, yeah. Did you see that? Well, this is a whole different kind of show. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a, this guy's packing a punch, 9.6. There you go. Yeah. That, as far as barley wines go, that's, that's little... actually relatively low. low. They can go really? as high as 14, 14 15, yeah. Yeah, so barley wines, they're one of the highest alcohol content beer on average. It's really them, Belgian quads, and Imperial Stouts are kind of in a three-way tie. Uh, and they drink, even though they have the name barley wine they tend to drink almost more like a brandy or a cognac so that's what look at the color snifters i mean that's, yeah so this is actually that's exactly what i think of when i look it. at it exactly really? it definitely has that kind of look as yeah. you'd expect out of a brandy everybody pose yes it is pretty is that the same color as my hair uh close i think you're more ginger than yeah. this beer yeah. <laughs> we should get ginger. more <laughs> ginger than the ginger. beer well cheers guys cheers i don't think we actually did that no. with the quarter of all the beers 
Okay, let me see. What, what are we smelling? What's on the nose? Alcohol. Nose. Alcohol. Alcohol and, and hops. Hops. Was, yeah. So I gra- can, like, I like can grassy smell hops. type hops. Yep. So this is actually an extremely hoppy beer. Actually, even a lot of imperial stouts, even though they don't taste hoppy, can be very well of hops. Whole cone Pacific Northwest. That's why hops. they call it. That's why they call it the Bigfoot, because like Bigfoot's the big, crazy creature you never see, and they it's big aggressive hops and all. So mm. and you don't see them. No, you don't. I see love them. the fact we felt the need to, to tell people what Bigfoot was. Yeah. In case anybody mm-hmm. managed to miss that. Sure. On the next episode, the Smurfs. <laughs> that's or <a>, Sasquatch. <laughs> that's Bigfoot. So yeah, that's so tasty. Huge beer, ton of hops. So you're definitely going to get some of that bitterness, but Very aggressive. so much malt, so much alcohol. It is bitter. Bitterness and sweetness have a tendency to kind of balance each other out mm-hmm. to a degree. When you have so much malt character in there, and especially so much alcohol, it takes some of that bitterness and kind of tempers it down. There you go. Uh, so even though it is bitter, it's not nearly as bitter as the amount of hops that are in here would really suggest. Okay. Still drinkable. I'd like to learn what the malt flavor is because I don't really know what that means. Yeah. So malt comes from the barley. Like that's barley is basically the foundation of of 90% of beer. So your grain bill. But I understand if I taste hops, like I understand that taste. Yeah. I don't know which part of the things are the malt. So that's going to be all those kind of bready notes, Mm -hmm. any hints of that coffee before that was coming from the malt. Uh, Basically, when you're making malted barley, essentially what they do is they get it to start germinating. They get it to start growing and forming a plant, and then they stop it. They kill that baby barley. Uh, Sounds way darker when you put it like that. (laughs) But after killing the baby barley, they go ahead, they they roast it in a a kiln, uh, basically a big drum. And depending on how much you roast it, uh, that will create entirely different flavors. You can get something that tastes kind of crackery and biscuity. There you go. All the way through. What'd you call me? (laughs) Oh, sorry. Did I say that out loud? (laughs) That's an excellent point. To his point. Crackery, biscuity, bready, pretzely, all the way down to your chocolates and espressos and burnt bread, as I said earlier. All right. So if you're tasting something that tastes like it could potentially. Starchy. Starchy. There you go. I don't know why we didn't just start and end with Starchy. <laughs> she did a way better job than I did in like Here we're going three around, minutes of conversation. Around the world with the kiln and the, <laughs> the germinating yeah, process. Yeah, so Starchy, and... that's the word. That was the one I was looking for that whole time. Hey guys, name all things that have starch in it. Bread. <laughs> oh, never mind, you just did. It's <laughs> mm. pretty good. We have a lot I, I love this yeah. one. This is such a good beer. So it's big. It beers it's like this are sippy. also one of the... Yeah, these, these beers age very, very well. Now, I will say an American barley wine like Bigfoot, uh, some people will be, try to age barley wines upwards of 10 plus years. Ooh. There are some barley wines you can do that with. This one Bigfoot says, is so heavily drink hot. it fresh or cellar it in a cool, dark place. to taste Anything beyond about three years on time. Bigfoot, it starts to decay pretty fast. Three years? Who's keeping beer more than three years? I got some in my fridge that are about five or six. That Trappist I had the other yeah. day was three years old. Wow. You drink right. Rockefeller the other night, right? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe an everyday guy. Alcohol but, doesn't uh, stay that long around my house. Yeah, yeah that was it's I had to get an entire full size fridge for that to happen. There you go. Uh, yeah, in general, don't age your beer. Most beer is at best different, not better if you I age thought it. you said donate your beer. To me. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Or to, you know, don't people age in need. your beer. You there said, are children in need, like Josh, when he was <laughs> there growing up, who needed their beer. There are kids in Africa that have with no their beer. Burnt toast. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all fram thermoses <laughs> and they're non Patagonia vests. There you go. Aww. Aww. Poor Josh. Oh, yes. Man. Worst part is, I was telling a story before we started recording about literally living next door to a meth lab and we're making fun of you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it is, hey, it's all good. Oh. Back, back to what you were saying. Um, a lot of these barley wines can be aged, but yeah. a lot of the stuff on the American front don't go much longer than several years. Yeah, too, too many there's hops a, in general. There's a lot of, of diminishing returns for my scientific and math people out there. Interesting. Yes. This really is. We have a huge math crowd. <laughs> yes. Hey. A ton of the, the Ian Malcolms of the world. Beer, it, beer is science. And it is. Yes. It's not, <laughs> is it math? Both. We're gonna okay. roll with it. Both. Hey, uh, from coming from a home brewer, if you don't track the the logs and the numbers I and stuff, I love how hard you're trying yeah. to back uh-huh. into this being math. I'm telling you, and man. And it's art. <laughs> yeah. It's art. It's cooking. Whatever you're into, that's what it is. If cats are your thing, somehow we'll tie it into beer. <laughs> no, I promise. <laughs> but not the movie. I heard that was. Terrible. Is that a cat hair? Yeah. In the beer? Exactly. Cat hair in the beer. I probably should have washed those glasses better. 
This is this is very complex. Part. Yeah. Very complex. As you're drinking it, you'll get a lot more. That, like I feel like I was a little quick with the first. As yeah, we talk about now. beer, I always like to say, people talk about how hey, wine is so complex. You can't touch wine as far as complexity and the flavors that you get. Give them a barley wine or give them one of these Belgian strong ales. The variety and complexity in these beers, oh my gosh, it's incredible. It is. Like there's a lot of stuff going on that my brain doesn't really know how to compute, but yeah. I know that it's happening. <laughs> it's happening, but it broke you. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I just can't make it's it. It's happening. It broke her, and she's she's uh, appreciating it. But know? I'm into it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah exactly. I'm into it. What, what do the kids Long say now? I'm here it. for it. I think. Don't don't, don't say we, that. We, I think. I think we just became way less cool mm -mm. instantly. Like I Which think is all of feet. us, are, Which all of us are wearing Crocs now. All of a sudden, it's no. weird. No. That's not true. <laughs> with socks. Don't say things. Like but no, with barley stuff. wines, you're going to get a huge malt character. Yes. So you are going to get some of those big caramely notes, mm -hmm. as well as some roast. Uh, usually not as much roast as you get out of, for example, uh, an imperial style. It's not going to be quite as espresso-y, not as chocolatey. But you also get some of those kind of uh, raisiny notes as well. A uh, little bit of that kind of like dark fruit or dried fruit kind mm -hmm. of characteristic. And with this one, it's so hoppy that you are. You're going to get some of those traditional Pacific Northwest hops, uh, little herbaceousness. Some bitterness and just a it's totally touch herbaceous. Beer. Very well Bro. said. <laughs> so herbaceous. Very well said. Typically, when I see a beer this color, I'm expecting those dark fruity notes, like raisiny notes. Mm. But then this one is so, like you said, so aggressively hopped. And that's totally kinda, herbaceous. That's more on display aggressively here. Aggressively hopped. Yeah. The so big it's foot. a big beer as well. Big I mean, beer, big is... foot. Well, that put the stamp on that. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like that's our tagline. We're just going to end it with that. Big, big beer, big, big foot. foot. Take that Sierra Nevada. You that's, know, it's a quarter I every time you use that. Bears. I don't think. Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. People are going to really get sick of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so definitely one of the biggest ones. So, Steph, tell me a little about what you thought about the whole line so far. Any particular favorites? Any ones that you didn't really care for? All right. <clears throat> Here we go. I've already had a few of them before today. I'd say my biggest pleasant surprise was this pale ale right out of the gate. Nice. That nice. was delicious. Yes. Perfect everyday beer. Freaking loved Goes it. Goes anytime. I yep. freaking loved it. I've had the torpedo many times before. I like it. But after that, I was like, I want to oh, go back I, to the pale ale. I know, I did. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to go back to it. Your favorite beer. I do love, love the hazy little thing. I'm a fan of that. I already was before this. I've got some in my fridge at home. I do love it. Um, well, why didn't you offer to bring it? I went out and bought that. We're starting our first so fight why would right I? here on yes. camera. You already, you already going to buy it. <laughs> She's going to win. Uh, and then the the um, the one more. The Otra Vase. Mm -hmm. Otra Vase. Ah, yeah. I could it's... use an Otra Vase, I'll tell you. Yeah, which surprised me because I know you were a little trepidatious it about it. It surprised me. That was, the, that was the shocker of the bunch. Like, yes. I really was a little nervous about that one, and it was delicious. Like, And I it's mean, a perfect intro. I want too. some tacos mm -hmm. now. After having that, I always like, want tacos. Well, there you go. Is, is there ever There's a bad never time? a bad time? Pizza and tacos. If I ever say no to either one of those, please, something's wrong. All for hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that was that was it. I, I've never been a huge uh, wheat beer fan, and that sort of stayed true. I didn't hate any of them, but like that was not on my top list. Nah, and this was super interesting to me. I've never had a barley wine. And this is about the appropriate amount of barley wine. Uh, yeah. You see some people cracking open 12 or 16 or 22 ounce bottles nope. all for themselves. That is a short road to a long evening. Yeah. So, yeah, don't <laughs> recommend that. Yeah. All right, Josh. What's your favorite? Yeah, it's too hard. I'm, I'm going to leave, leave, leave the dissertation B, you know, because I could talk about for days how I appreciate each one of these according to the style. And, right, right. How Sierra Nevada has just done an incredible job with, you know, each blah, one of these. Blah, blah, blah. Which variants. one did you like yeah. the best? That really you know, is like a real diplomatic way of doing yeah. it. Yeah. Right? Which one do you no, like? No, no, no. Everybody's I'm, the I'm same. I'm not a politician and I hate Participation politics. Participation trophies swear. for what's your, every beer. What's your go to? Now, if I'm going if I'm, if I'm to choose Gold a Gold star beers, top to bottom. Which one do you want to drink another one of? Which one of these do you hate and you wish would die? No, I, that's Matter of fact, no. just flip off a bottle. Yeah. Aaron, <laughs> shut up. What? If, I'm, if I have to reach for one, I have to reach just for one. Had a long day at work. Want to yeah, enjoy a beer? Go. I'm going with that porter beer right there. All right, all right. True to this style. Had a long day at work, putting up with a lot of you are a por crap porter. Porter. Do you carry suitcases Portering. for a living? There you go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Is that a porter? What is a porter? What is a porter? 
A por- so a porter is somebody that carries, carries things. Stump- yeah, somebody who carries stuff. I mean, originally people would basically carry heavy things from the docks yep. out to wherever they had to I go. I wish I had a porter to carry heavy. That things. would be really nice. You would think they would include one in every single bottle of Sierra Nevada porter, and yet somebody to do the chores. Lot. Technically, Aaron, you were my porter this evening when I brought that is true. Heavy I was things. carrying the heavy stuff. I'd- yep, mm-hmm. I'm the porter. Cheers. Well, I don't come free with a bottle. <laughs> we don't. We don't even have to ask you which one your favorite. No, okay, no, no, it's, okay. pre- it's pretty right. clear but which no, no, one no. my okay, favorite Okay, so is. pretend this one wasn't here. That's a okay, good point. So Sierra Nevada Pale is out. Yep, that one's out. Pretend After that, that. oh, man, so the, the Bigfoot is great. They're, they're all great, but if God, I have blah, to pick blah. one, the Porter. Yes. Uh, that Porter is just really? so yeah. smooth. It's such a good just yeoman's beer. Yes, I love uh, that. Yeah, just a, a good Yo, everyday yo man's beer. But uh, it is. It's a perfect beer for the end of a long work day. It's the perfect beer to kind of, you know, replenish you. You know, it's basically the Gatorade of beers, but nowhere near as refreshing, and it's not going to help with the hangover. <laughs> That's nothing like Gatorade. <laughs> Anything's like Gatorade. It's, it's replenishing. The yeah. You know what I mean, or not. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> that one has salt in it. That's and what, we're that's live. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah, no, the pale ale is definitely my favorite, but that porter, it's been so long since I've had it, and it's just, you can't go yeah. wrong. It it's is good. tasty. Uh, yeah, so guys, uh, that pretty much covers the top to bottom. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, guys. Uh, Steph, what do you got coming up? Well, my marketing company, Sweet Tea, just released a brand new DIY brewery website builder that I'm super excited about. It's called it's pretty Sweet, awesome. It's called Sweet Brewery Sites. You can check it Which out. Which is exactly what Josh said when he saw it. Yeah. She showed, sent us the, the preview, and I was like, hey, that's sweet. So go to sweetbrewerysites.com. You can check out all the details about it and get an affordable monthly fee, and you can build your own gorgeous brewery website. Nice. Awesome. Josh, how about yourself? Uh, just more beer with brewpreneur videos, making beer approachable for anyone. It doesn't matter where you're at, where you come from. We can all learn about beer and taste it. You can find me at brewpreneur on instagram and anywhere else on social so yeah and for me guys just keep an eye out for more content more shows on uh, beer with me network uh, you can also check me out at beercharlotte.com or wherever you find obnoxious gingers in your neck of the internet wait, 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 wait. obnoxious gingers <laughs> uh in your neck of the internet i guess woods. i qualify there's a little red in this beard <laughs> just a little bit know. i don't know oh man so uh again thank you so much for everybody for joining us thank you guys and remember The only thing better than a beer is a a beer beer with with friends. friends.